Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a box and whiskers chart. So a box and whiskers chart looks like this. You have your box here and you've got your whiskers at the end. So you have your two, you have your lower whisker and your upper whisker. And this is a type of chart that helps you look at quartile data. There's kind of five sets of data here. There's a, there's a minimum, there's a quartile one, a medium, or the quartile two when you think about it, or quartile three and a maximum value. Now it corresponds with the chart here that I'm showing this example. We have our minimum here at the bottom. That's going to be the lower whisker here. Our Q1 is going to be our lower quartile, the beginning of that bottom box here. The median is going to be the middle divider here. The upper quartile is Q3, which is at the topmost of this box. And we have our second whisker or top whisker and our maximum value here, notwithstanding any outliers. So I'm not going to cover outliers here in this particular video. I'll probably have another one later on that covers that, but this is going to be irrespective of outliers. Now to create this box in Excel 2016, it's actually quite easy because there is a particular command here or an option to create a box and whiskers chart, but we're not going to do that because this is going to focus on versions that are prior to Excel 2016, like Excel 2013, which don't have this particular option. I do have another video that how, shows you how to create it within Excel 2016, and I'll put that in the description. But for this particular video, we're going to focus on how to create it if you don't have Excel 2016, even though I'm using 2016 here. Now, what we're going to do is take this particular chart. Let's move, let's take this away, and let's start from scratch. And what we need to do is find out our five values here, our min, Q1, median, Q3, and our max. The min is going to be using the function min. This is going to be our minimum value. I'm going to press tab to open up the parentheses and select this range of data. Press enter, and I've got 421. I'm going to move this over, this fill handle over here, move it over so it's going to copy that data too. It's going to copy the minimum value of my group scores here, group two. So I'm going to be comparing the five different variables here of group one and group two. Now for my Q1, I can use a function called quartile. Type equals quartile, and I'm going to use the exc portion of quartile. This is exclusive of the median. What it means is it's going to take the med it's going to take the Q1 value, but it's not going to inc include the median number as part of the calculation. So if you notice, there's also a quartile inclusive. In this particular video, I'm not going to cover the difference in these two. Probably I'll cover that in uh, a preceding an another video when I'll do outliers. But in this particular example, I'll use the exclusive portion. It takes two arguments. Let me double click it to select it. It takes two arguments and the array. Uh, two arguments. One is the array and one is the quartile function that you wanted to do. So I'm going to select my array here comma quartile. So it's going to ask me, do I want to do the first quartile, the medium value, or the third quartile, which kind of fits in nicely with these three values here. So I'm going to select the first quartile there, press enter. It's going to give me 739. Let me move the fill handle over here. So it's going to copy the formula over. Now that is my quartile there. So we want to do median. So I'll type in quartile and choose the exclusive. Choose my array again. And then this time I'm type two for the median value. Press enter and move the fill handle here over here so I can get my value for my uh, second group here. So for Q3, same thing, quartile function, exclusive, my array here, and comma, three. Press enter and it's giving, giving me my third quartile. So that fits my quartiles here. So my last value here is the maximum, the maximum value of this set of data. Net, we can use the max function. Press tab, and I'm going to select this array, press enter, and have 1306 as the max value for group one and 1200 for group two, right? So I can, if I click over there, you can see it copied the formula over for uh, C2 to C12 here. Now, I can't actually use these particular values to create my chart. As I mentioned before, there is not a box and whiskers chart in previous versions of Excel, Excel uh, that are previous to 2016. So we're going to use a stack column chart to create. But before we do that, we actually have to kind of massage the data a little bit. 
So what do I mean? We have to take those five values and kind of convert it a little bit to a format where the stack column chart reads it a little bit easier. Let me bring back my chart to kind of show you how this might work out. So if I were to go and get the value up to Q1, what I want is the value that is up to here. And to get that value, what I need to do is just have my quartile number. So that's going to equal that Q1 number, right? So it goes up to 739. When we think about it, it goes from the bottom up to 739 down here. To get my Q1 to Q2 number, that is the median minus Q1. So I'm going to take equals the median here minus Q1. So it's going to be in the range of value of 121. So it's going to, this particular set here is 121. It's uh, 121 units when you kind of think about it. Now for Q2 to Q3, that's going to be Q3 minus the median. So that's going to, I'm going to take equal the Q3 minus the median. All right. And then I have my bottom whisker. So the bottom whisker needs to be from this range down to that range, right? So it's going to be Q1 minus the minimum, right? So I'm going to type equals uh, Q1 minus the minimum to get the unit or the difference here. For my top whisker, it's going to be the difference between the top value and that Q3. So it's going to be equals my max minus the Q3. Right, so I want to get that range there. Okay, now I've got all my values here for the group one. I'm going to select everything here. And since these are relative cell references, they don't have any dollar signs in front of them, I can take my fill handle here and just kind of move it over to the right. It will copy the formulas over and get everything respective of column C. So I've got my values here. And let me delete this. And let's start with the charting. Let's take my values. All I need is my three values initially here to create my column chart, my stack column chart. So I select the values here. I'm also going to select my headers here. So it's going to make it correctly identified for my X axis. And under the insert tab, go to my 2D column and select 2D column. Now it's not going to draw it out correctly here because it's kind of swapped uh, the data. So what I need to do is just switch it. So once I have my chart selected, I can go under design and click on switch row column. So it's going to switch the data around. So I have my group one and group two. I don't need my uh, legend here. Press that delete and I'm closed now. All I need to do is create my error bars. This I'm going to have disappear. Well, let's keep that there for now. But I'm going to create my error bars. I'm going to start with the error bars at the top first. Select that. Go to Add Chart Element and select Error Bar. And more error bar options. And I'm going to have the plus one, the one that goes up. And it's going to go up from here, right? And I need my custom. I'm going to specify the value. And that's going to be the top whisker here. So the positive error value is going to be the top. So I'm going to delete that and select my top whisker here. Press enter. And now you see I have my top whiskers, right? So for group one, the top whisker should be ending at around 1306, which is around there. And the group two should be around 1200, which is there, right? So now I want to do the bottom whisker. So the bottom whisker is going to be this particular block of data, the, the last, the first uh, quarter. So I'm select that. You can see both of them are selected. Go to add chart elements, error bars, more error bar options, and this is going to be the minus one. And I'm going to select custom, specify value, and this is going to be the range of data here. And I want the negative error value. Select that, delete that, and get my bottom whisker value here. Click OK, and now you see my bottom whiskers. Let's see if it drew it out correctly. So. My minimum is 421 for this first one, which kind of corresponds here, and 150 for group two, which corresponds here. Now, I don't need this particular series of data here, the blue, the blue area. So I'm going to right click that and under fill, have no fill. So basically, it just kind of disappears. And that is going to be my box and whiskers chart. I don't need this particular, um, these grid lines here. Select it and press delete. 
and now I have my box and whiskers and it is, gives you an idea of comparison between the five quartiles of data. We have our minimum values here, we have our Q1 which is the bottom here, we have our median which is the line between the Q2 values and Q3 values. You can see this line there's more distribution uh, even distribution here whereas it's kind of unevenly distributed on the lower 50% uh, here and we have our Q3 values which is the top and of course our max values which is the top of this whisker. So that's the way that we can create a box and whiskers chart in previous versions of Excel prior to Excel 2016 if you don't have it. And basically it's, it's a good way to kind of visualize the comparison of uh, different series of data using the five value, five kind of quartile values here. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.